that I always wanted to make a big movie. I thought to myself, I've got this idea, everybody loves America, everybody get ex gets excited or disillusioned or upset about America, so I'm going to make a film about America. Looking back now, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. You know, I saw Iraq and I saw it and I just thought, God, this is this is just not right. I just this something telling is telling me inside that it's just not right what they're doing. I found myself actually feeling the opposite of what I felt as a kid. I felt hatred towards America. I felt frustrated. I felt angry. The man of books that we've been reading, you know, Michael Moore. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> this is a very good book. I have, I have yet to read this. Once I had some money uh, from the Australian Film Commission. I was able to employ assistants, researchers, to help me find the story that I was looking for. It was just a very long process. So it wasn't about what America was going to do to the world or what America had done to the world. It was really about um, me, you know, my feelings about America. And, and, and really the first time that I, was, I became conscious of that was when Trish Lake uh, came on board the project. We started looking at how it could be opened up and be um, a much more ambitious project than what it currently was. He showed me the promo tape of My America, which had this rather kooky looking animation and kind of primitive feel about it, which I thought was a very simplistic way of tackling stuff that I think a lot of younger people would really identify with. If I was going to start directing and being in the film, we needed somebody who could physically produce the film. We found Jane Jepps. She handled a lot of the, uh, the physical producing side of things throughout the production, and has also acted as a co-writer and has done a lot of research. So she's done a lot of work in a lot of different areas. Getting a film up is as much of a drama as, as the film that you end up seeing on screen. Um, it's the behind the scenes drama, getting your investors involved, getting your investors locked in, um, getting their promises and their excitement as a signature on a piece of paper and cash flowed. Um, it's been very interesting. We need to be quite careful about little Peter and the complexity of history, although it might be a good way to show that actually most of us are out of our depth with the complexity of these situations. Both Jane and Trish were extremely helpful helping me position my focus and my vision to the right direction. So we're making a, a booth which we'll take around the world to all these countries. It's very exciting and also uh, very hectic. <laughs> But it's, if I just may. Yeah, that, that's okay. That is, it's not made for the cyclone. Mm. It's not cyclone proof. Okay. Filming took place over five continents and over two years. It, it was an exciting journey. It was an amazing learning curve for me to one day be in Iran in a, in a completely different culture and three days later be in Kenya in, inside a refugee camp. That was one of the biggest culture shocks one could have. Yeah. No, maybe, uh, uh -huh. over there. Mani and I became friends. He was our eyes and ears in Tehran and I feel greatly indebted to him. So documentary to a large extent is about dealing with shifting sands. You know, things change day to day in terms of what we might want to shoot, depending on what had happened the day before. So often we were arranging location permits in 12 hours, and that often meant people doing things at two and three o'clock in the morning to try and make them happen. There were 101 things that were simply beyond our control. Uh, we had a lot of problems with bird flu. So we are into... That's we're going to the far northeast of the country where this refugee camp is. It's one of the biggest in Africa. There's hundreds of thousands of people living there, about 97% Somalian. And we have no idea what to expect. So beside um, the new arrivals from uh, Somalia. When we arrived in the refugee camp, we had two and a half days to meet people 
and find the story. There were thousands to choose from. Mohammed. Yes. Amiru. Amiru. <laughs> Shut. After you send me the message, can we get feedback what can from we the expect? side? The film started out as this film, Peter Hagedush wanted to find his America. But it, in some ways, it really became about these people who, who also have their America, who also have their visions and dreams. But the fact is, they can't have it. All the time unit you put in, how, mu how much time goes into creating one minute? Only one minute. One minute. Uh, maybe one month. <laughs> I grew up in Sweden. I always had this fantasy about America as well, about uh, the American dream and it's the land where you can do everything. So I had, I guess I shared a little bit of that fantasy of what America could be or what it, what it was. The hardest thing on my America was that really that the story and structure had to grow out of the, uh, the process of actually cutting it together. So Peter didn't have a uh, preconceived idea of this is how the film starts, this is the middle, and that's how it's going to end. That was something that we had to discover while we were making the film. It can be very frustrating when you sit uh, halfway through a process of cutting a film and you're not sure where it's going to because there's bits still missing and you're hoping the stuff that you already put together is going to survive in a later cut. So it's very much a trial and error period for, for the whole time of cutting this film. Take me seriously, please, take me seriously. We were close to rough cut but I was still trying oh, to yes, get to the president. Uh, I became obsessed. Mr. President, I would like to have a meeting with you. It's the 7th of February, 2010, and we have two months to finish the film. Two and a half months, and I was still got the ending. And I'm gonna have a baby in four months. This film was a very, very difficult film. In fact, I would believe it's the hardest film that either of us as three filmmakers would ever make partly because of the changing environment and the length of time it took to make the film, partly because of Peter having to face his own demons until what I consider would have been the toughest part of the film, which was in post-production about halfway through the edit. And I say halfway through because it probably should have been, you know, when we were finished the film in terms of um, time-wise, but we couldn't finish the film until Peter faced his demons. And when he did, that was the, the moment of truth, if you like, the breakthrough that allowed us to actually relook at the structure of the film and actually really nail the story. So the teacher's coming up to you and says, say this in Russian. Ah, uh, maybe try it one more time. An anti-American demonstration wasn't the best place to set up the booth. This was my lucky day. The woman I was speaking to was Masami Yevdeka, a former vice president. She explained to me why Iranians have trouble with America. One of the lowest points was when I realized that I'm not going to get to the president. <laughs> and it was, you know, I'm seeing it now, laughing about it, because I know how impossible the task was. But I truly believed that I would get there and that I would have, I have the right to get there. And realizing that it's just not gonna happen was painful. But another part of me still wanted to believe Obama could get America back on track. make a huge political statement. What it was asking is what happened to Peter Hagedush's America? The America that he dreamt about as a kid. Having uh, almost the luxury of being with this film for, for two years allowed the film to find its own voice, allowed Peter to become a character that really grows from where he was at the beginning of making this film and where he ends up at the end of the film because it is a bit of a time capsule of, uh, of Peter's life from a, a young man to um, you know, a much, much older man, not saying he's old. This is not just a, a quick snapshot of how um, Peter sees America in 2008 or 2010. 
it's really how Peter learns about himself in that period of, of uh, putting together My America and finding out what his My America really is.